Today, the possibilities are limitless. Well, actually, they're they're limited. They're we're, we're putting in limit switches, so the possibilities are limit switched. That works. So I've been uh, running this Gatton CNC now for a couple of years, and the way that I originally built it was just bare bones. I do it for as little as possible and uh, um, have as, as little bit of money outlay as, uh, as I could um, to not upset the CFO uh, too bad. Um, but anyway, so anyway, so I've had it now for a couple of years and uh, it's been running really great. Um, and I've decided to start doing some of the other upgrades that people do. Uh, I put in a T-Track uh, uh, bed and I still haven't leveled it off, but it's there. Um, and now we're going to do some limit switches. So we're going to walk through what it takes to put these limit switches in with the Raspberry Pi CNC and uh, um, show you some considerations to think about if you're putting in limit switches on your machine too. So let's take a look at the parts that we need and we'll go from there. Okay, so the things that you're going to need to hook this up is, of course, the limit switches. And you're also going to need some wire. Uh, this wire is 18.2, which is way overkill for what we're doing, but I, it's what I had. So uh, that's what I'm using. And uh, um, I already went ahead and did a really poor job of soldering the switches on. Um, these limit switches come in a pack of 10. I'll put an Amazon link down there to where I got them. Uh, and uh, you, know, you can click on it if you want. And uh, the other thing you need is a way to attach them to your machine. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use some scraps that I have lying around and we'll make it look decent and hopefully make it work. Um, also, you, you're going to need your controller, the Raspberry Pi controller. But we'll, we'll get okay, to So that. let's look at the, uh, man, I've got sawdust in my beard. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the uh, placement of our switches. The first one we're going to look at is the Z-axis. Z access. Z. Yeah. The way my machine is set up, um, I have the, the cable tray back here and it loops around and then all the wires come up and over. Um, so it, to me, it makes sense to put my limit switch on this side of the Z box. So what I'll probably do is uh, um, maybe I'll, I'll put a little stick or something coming out here and then the uh, the switch will just sit on on the Z and it'll activate it or something like that. I think that's probably good. Um, looking down here at the bottom, what you want to do is you want to raise your Z up as high as you're comfortable with. Uh, really, I only typically will carve things that are three quarters of an inch thick or less. Um, so this is really tall. I mean, it, it's a good six inches or so over the table. Um, which is way overkill for me, but uh, and really I could even go higher, but uh, we're not going to. Um, but this is good. It, it's I have all my bearings still engaged uh, and such like that. And my wires up here, more importantly, aren't getting pulled. They're still slack and, and all that. So we're going to do something with the Z probably right around through here. So the wire can come around and go in here, or maybe we even put it up here. Who knows? We'll figure that part out. So to think about for the uh, x-axis, there's a couple different places that I could put it. Um, I could put one up here and have it go off of the plate that's in the center of the x um, that goes across the gantry. Um, or what I'm really thinking is maybe I'll redo this uh, piece here that holds up my cable tray and uh, um, have it stick out a little bit further and attach, it, attach the switch to it so it'll activate off of the z-plate. And for the y-axis, I went ahead and I ran it all the way to the back because this is going to be its the machine's homing position, uh, essentially exactly how it is sitting right now. So it'll be the Z is all the way up, it is all the way to the right, and all the way to the back. Um, so I'm thinking here is that I will uh, attach the um, limit switch there to the uh, to that back piece and let it uh, let it fire off of that. So. Uh, that should work just fine there too. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten all my wires uh, cut. Well, most of it all cut, that one's still in the roll, but I have plenty of wire there. Um, I've gone ahead and I've soldered the uh, switches onto the 
uh, ends there. And I've done them. The Raspberry Pi wants you to do a normally uh, open uh, switch uh, placement. So when you when the switch is activated, it will ground out on the board and will activate the switch. So uh, um, that should be good. The thing that's going to show up in the uh, in the comment section, I'm sure, is, hey, you should the more reliable way to wire these switches is to have it on a normally closed um, setup. It's very true, but that's not how Proteineer tells you to do it. But like I said, this number 18 is way overkill. Um, I would probably, if I had it around, I would have used like 22 or something like that, but I had 18 around, so sounds good to me and works. Now to mount these uh, little guys, you should be using a uh, M2.5 uh, screw through these little mounting holes. Uh, I didn't have any. I had some number four, three quarter inch ones, which meant that they didn't fit through those holes. Uh, but there is enough meat around the holes that you can open them up a little bit and uh, to be able to fit the number fours in there. And uh, so that's what I've done. But if you have access to the M2.5 uh, screws, I would use those instead. Okay, so here we are in the cabinet of uh, my the CNC controller. Um, it's hanging off because I can't get to the screws that are here with it attached to the board. So just never mind that. Um, here in the corner is where your end stops are. You can see there's an X, a Y, a Z, and a ground. So when you do that, then what you have to do, here it is, is you do, um, I did the, oh, there you go. Um, the uh, um, normally uh, open uh, lines are coming in here, and then I ground, and then the other lines I have them all run into one place. Um, there's a little burntness on there because I used the torch to do the uh, um, which we call it stuff, and well, it got a little crispy, so that's alright, no big deal. So now we're gonna plug this back in and get the cover back on and uh then we get to start the fun stuff okay let's do a little recapping so um my little block is here and the switch is here for the z the new block here with the switch on it for the x and the one for the y is here in my gantry and i put a little block right off of the back there so if something bad does happen in that um that one doesn't uh, register it, it the gantry can actually pass that block to the rest of the uh, plywood that's back there so that is all hooked up and that is all wired into the raspberry pi and now the fun part okay. the uh, other thing you're going to want to do before you really get too far into this is set your machine up close to the um switches not on them but kind of close that way it doesn't have to travel all the way over here and do all this craziness to activate the switches if something's gonna go wrong, it's gonna be in this time frame here. So just start there and make your life a lot easier. Okay, so we've started up B, C, and C, and uh, I brought up all of my configuration information here. So uh, um, there's a few things that we need to change. One is number 21, uh, which if you can see my mouse, it's right here. It was zero when you start these up. So you're going to change that to a one and that activates your hard limits. You're also going to change number 22 to a one as well. And that activates the homing. Um, something else you're going to want to verify is that number five is set to zero. And what that is doing is uh, that's making sure that these, uh, the switches are normally open. So if you want to change it to normally closed, that's where you would do it but we want it on zero okay so um then we're going to come down and uh let's see here uh oh number 23 right now it's set to zero and that's where i'm keeping it my machine is homing in the back right corner and that is what that zero stands for for that one um if you change it so uh, one, two, three, four, whatever the other numbers are, it, it will home to a different spot on your board. And uh, I want mine to the back corner. So that one is gonna be there. Um, let's see here. Um, that's all that we have to change initially, 
okay, to, to get this thing to work. Um, I'm also changing, I changed number 25. Um, mine was set at 500 originally, um, and now I changed it to 750 to get it to move a little bit quicker uh, because it's gonna be pretty slow uh, to home. And that is, uh, that's moving the initial, uh, the gantry and stuff like that. It's moving the motors back to the home position. So I don't want it rocket fast, which I may make it faster later, but uh, yeah, we're gonna start here and see where that goes. Um, also, uh, let's see here, number 24 here. Originally it was uh, 25 um, and I've changed it to 50. And that's, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna activate the switch. It's gonna come up here, you know, something's gonna come and hit the switch. Then it's gonna back off and then come in slow to hit the switch. That's what the number 24 is for. Um, and also to that back off distance is gonna be number 27. So uh, it's normally set at one and uh, I changed it to five. You want it to back off of that uh, switch completely. And if it's only backing off one step, it's not gonna come off the switch. So we're gonna start it at five and we can manipulate it from there. Um, so now that those things are set, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a whirl. So I'm gonna show you here the machine and I'm gonna hit the home button. So I came off the switch. It's going back up slowly for the Z. There it goes, it activated and backed off of it. Now the X and the Y are moving at the same time and they should back off of them at the same time. The X already activated because it was closer. The Y is going, there it goes. And now they're both going in, you should hear them both click. There you go, and they backed off a little bit. So now the machine is homed to that back corner. So that essentially is as far back as it can go. Um, it, when it when it backs backed off this way, it moved uh, four steps or four millimeters forward and to the left. So um, let me show you what we're going to do next. Okay, where the machine is at right now, um, after you've hit the zero, you, you've homed it back to this corner. Go into your in here and zero at the X and the Y out. Leave the Z alone, but zero the X and the Y. And then we're gonna move it to the front corner. So now what I've done is I've moved the whole gantry to the far left corner of where my work surface is gonna be. This is gonna be my normal zero. Um, I'm gonna be putting in, I have a um, like a zero stop that I'm gonna put in this corner. And uh, so that's the point that it's going to be. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've lined this all the way up. Um, so it's X and Y are over that. And now I'm going to go back over to my machine, over to the computer. Okay, so what, now that we've moved the machine back to the front corner and uh, um, it's going to give us readings. Um, I already I moved mine back to the back corner. So these are positive currently, uh, but you would be seeing this in the negative. Um, if when you're doing it and uh, so that is going to tell you your total size of the max travel distance that you want it to go um, so we're going to write those down for me the x is 905 the y is 1360 and i made the z 200 it's not quite that much it's a little bit less than that i think but uh it's a good it's fine number to deal with um write those down and then you're going to go back into the terminal down here and you're going to change uh 130 uh you know, dollar sign 130 which is your x you're going to change that uh, 131 which is the y and 132 which is the z uh, you're going to change those to those values that you just wrote down up here so go ahead and then do that and then rehome the machine again wait before you send it back to the back corner again, zero it at this front location because this is where everything is gonna start taking place from. So hit the X zero and Y zero at this spot too. So you're gonna get that back here. I 
desk is a mess. Look at this. It's a, just, I mean, look at my workbench. The workbench is a disaster. All right, but anyway, so the machine has rehomed itself. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna speed that up a little bit. All right, so now we're there. So that is gonna be um, the way that I have it set up right now. Look, now we have positive 901, 1356. And like I said, my max travel is 1360 for the Y and 905 for the X. The machine moved off of those, that back point by four millimeters in each direction. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to the buttons, like where I did the probe button earlier. Um, and I'm gonna set this one here in this corner. And we're just gonna give it a simple uh, G command, G0, Y0, I'm sorry, G0, X0, Y0. I guess it could be Y0, X0, it doesn't really matter. And um, we're gonna save that one as well. And what that's gonna do now when I hit that is because now I'm at, you know, we zeroed everything out back in the, back before, is when we hit this one, it's gonna move the machine back up to that front corner where I start all my projects from. So it's going to race back that way and watch it just go right up there. There you go. And of course it's, you know, it's quite a bit above it. So it doesn't look like it's right above that, but it is. So that was really simple. Not, not bad at all. So after several years of having the switches, I finally went ahead and took the little bit of time to go ahead and put them in. And uh, I think I'm going to be really glad that I did. It's kind of like uh, when, when you're not using a probe and then you put the probe on, you're like, well, why the hell didn't I do this before? Um, I'm sure I'm going to be thinking the exact same thing as soon as I start using this homing, the homing switches. So... Um, Hey, the machine's taken a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, very happy with that. Uh, maybe at some point I'll, I'll stain some more pieces and make it kind of look the same. I don't know. Whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, I'll, I'll put uh, all the numbers that you got to change and all that good stuff down in the uh, description so that you have that and you know exactly what numbers you need to change and stuff like that. Um, of course, your numbers might change for, are going to be dependent on your machine for the max traveling and such like that. But uh, I'll leave the numbers down there of what ones you're going to change for that. So uh, have a good one. Like it, subscribe it and all that good stuff. And we'll see you the next time around.